Hello everybody, this is Frankie Day from Frankie Day Models. Okay guys, I've got a change of course going on right here. I kind of bailed out the plastic for a while. And uh, since it's so beautiful out here, a lot of things are screaming at me. I went to the um, to my storage facility to get some, uh, some, some loose timber I could use. And I ran across my old building set that I had many, many years ago. I bought, I, I, didn't, I had no idea. I had this thing. And I was, I kind of surprised myself. That's the that's one thing I like about collecting stashes. You got so much stuff that you bought throughout the years. It, it turns into, as you go, as you get older in life, it, it turns in, uh, like they'll say, out of sight, out of mind. Well, it, when I see this, man, how can I forget this thing? Anyway, what I was still up to right now is uh, I got a new build going on. I figure it's going to be about 20 videos on this ship here. I'm going to be working on this and also be working on some des desktop builds going on. Starting out with a 172nd scale C133 Cargo Master dubbed as your weenie wagon. I'll probably bring that to view too. So I got a lot of stuff going now, guys. I'm just so I'll be I'll be uh, bouncing. You know how I am. I'll, I'll bounce around Frankie Day. I I'll, I'll be back on the Akagi real good. I'll get that. I've been doing some work on the Akagi, and I'll have that finish up pretty soon with, without no problem. And the rest will follow as well. So I I, ha I had to guys. I this thing here was just I just had to take it out of mothballs. So I took it out, and this is showing how old this thing is. I've had this thing. I think I bought this back in 1960. I was about 20 years old back then. No, I was 19. I was in the military. I think I bought this at uh, what? What? It was not a hobby shop. I know exactly where I bought it. I ordered, I ordered it through the ship store. Exactly how I got it. I know I didn't get it from the hobby shop. Everything's coming back to me in this thing. The scale 175. I went to the ship store and I ordered these billing kits. I ordered this kit so I could probably build on board ship and uh, keep myself busy when I get off watch. If I had to stand duty or something and uh, my watch has already been done already. I could be able to work on this thing, but it never happened. So I did. I sent it home statewide, the PO plus post box office. Went home to my home, and I've had it ever since. And when I seen it, I said, oh, "What the hell is this thing?" Ah, the doggone! I I I was so amazed. I was so amazed. Uh. I'm really still over amazed on this thing. I even got the fitting set for it too, and I'll show it to you here also. I'll give you the history of this thing too, the LV1. When you look at it, it looks like something probably back in the 1920s, 1930s, but it's not. The building boat LV, uh, LV1 was a light ship. The LV had, had four light ships, yeah, four. And when I first purchased this thing from the ship store, uh, the kit cost, uh, I think I paid $15 for it. And the fitting set cost me $25. That's right behind me. I should have all the stuff prepared for the video, guys. You gotta watch my back again. I'm sorry. I just get a little. Ahead of myself at times because I got so many things going through me right now, and this is one of them. I'm going to take my time on this. Here's the fitting set that comes with it, and we'll go through the, the, the build itself and the fitting set as we get to see the video. Okay, last conversation, the LB1, there's four of them. Now, I bought this uh, when I was born the USS Oxford AGTR-1. 
and uh, we came to uh, San Diego for refit. And I uh, had the duty one day. And I went to the ship store and says, you know something, I can order anything around the world. Just go to the ship store. So I went down to San Diego. I said, hey, yo, yo. I said, I need you to place an order for me. Okay, what do you want, Frank? So go through it. Now look, I got a catalog I got from, from home. I'm interested in getting this light ship right here. I like to get this. And I ordered to Billy. It took about six weeks for it to go uh, to come to FPO uh, post box from San Francisco. And uh, Mike Boat came alongside with mail call six weeks later. Here it came from this and that. It was shipped in a I believe with it, it was shipped in a real real I think it was in a wooden in a in a small wooden crate. They didn't have boxes back in those days. They just used small laminated wood for shipping crates. And everything else was mail went out. And uh, I knew what it was that came. So I got I was, I was over zealous and looked at it, started to build it. So oh, wait a second, Frank. You ain't got your tools, you need saws, you need files, you need glue, you need clamps, you need nails, you need this, you need that, and aboard this ship you don't have. So the smart thing to do is sit it stateside. Oh, that's where it went. Ever since it's been there. Okay. Now all these bulkheads, I had to cut all these bulkheads out. Use my Dremel tool right behind me. So as you notice around me, all my stuff is gone. Yes, it's gone. I put it in storage right next door to me. So I can make room because I want to work on these things. I can't have them laying around with something's going to get busted. Only thing that's around and harms the way is up there. And I'm pretty aware of what's above me all the time because I know how high it is. Also, I've been here two years down this trailer. And I'm pretty used to the, ab the altitude of these things hanging. And, well, it's like anything. Everybody gets used to anything. You know where it's at. Okay, back to this. I got the deck on last night. I just took off the clamps and everything. Now, not too many people out there build building boats. You got a few very people out there to build model ships in general. And uh, this here is kind of different. This is, I'll be the only guy in the world that will have this model built on YouTube for people all over the world to look. And uh, there's nothing on this thing on YouTube. Yes, there is. There's two of them. Some guy had a radio control, I believe, came from this kit. It sure looks familiar. And the other one was the uh, the real one. It's in Germany. And uh, there's a lot of it on the internet. Oh yeah, there's plenty of it there, but on YouTube, not very much. So this is uh, the first of the four series of the LB light ships. They're built to uh, get the, the, the manufacturer, with Bon Voss or somebody else. It was built back during World War II, in the middle of the war, 1943. <clears throat> now, when I, first bought the, when I first bought this thing, it looked like a light ship from the 1930s, possibly 20s too. No, no more than 1920s and 30s, somewhere around those two decades. But it wasn't. It isn't. It's all steel hull. It was built back in 1943. It was built in Germany. And since this is a Danish kit, I figured it was a Danish light ship, but it isn't. It's German. Has this thing been used today? I had no knowledge of Billy of that. Maybe so, I don't know. But they took a lot of the night tech they took a lot of the uh, in the state side, they took the Nantucket, the Relief, the Hannah Chickens, and Columbus, and, and all these light ships. They that were used to be posted about anywhere from 50 to 100 miles off the coast, uh, sometimes 200 miles off the coast. Uh, they don't use them anymore. They, they know it's called buoy beacons. They got GPS system on there. Plus, they got the the beacon on there. It takes place of the uh, the lighthouse itself on the light ship. Now, this is a one kind of a kit. Why? They don't make it no more. Where you can get it at? Unknown certainty. Just check eBay. Check old ship collectors, the old old uh, old time model kit collectors. 
They may scare you up one. I know there's some of these things floating around. You may find them on eBay. I don't know. But I did get a bunch of stuff on eBay. Oh, yeah. I got more stuff from mail call yesterday. These came in from um, Amazon. These are more servos. I got about 20 in there. They're probably about a good inch square. Strong, too. They work very well. One of them is going to go in here. Now, this, this model has three options. Option number one. It can be used just built from the box. Plus use the pending set. And just display it like you do these things. Option number two. You still can make a static model out of it. But you can have a lighthouse tower working on it. And the LEDs inside there. This model was designed by Mr. Elder Billing. Back in 1960, we came out. This thing had a, it was designed for radio control. As you can see, the inside's removable. It's even got the cooling on here where the cabin slide on. It can actually, it can lock on there. It's pretty good. We'll discuss the construction on this thing after I do a little brief historical thing on this thing. <clears throat> okay, uh, I would, uh, yeah, dig it out, Frank. Uh, uh, yeah. These things were uh, a one-of-a-kind kit. They may show up on eBay. You don't know where they show up on, but I do know one thing. That there's probably a few of these things floating around somewhere. And so, if anybody gets one of these, just follow me on, with the with the 20 videos I'm gonna put out. So I, 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 I surmise about 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 20 videos. Well, 20 on this thing. It's going to be very, very slow because it's wood. This thing is very old and ancient and everything. And I've uh, had it for years. I was really surprised at the condition of the wood. It's really, you can smell the, the newness of the, of the wood because I, I had it locked up all these years. So that's what I like about putting stuff in boxes because they're like a time capsule. They keep everything preserved in there. As years goes by, you open it up as fresh as the day you put it in there. I call them time capsules in a box. Okay. Now we're going to get with the fitting set here in this thing. The fitting set in this thing here cost me $25 about the billing. Here it is right here for you. Boats, all that beautiful looking brass. You don't see fittings like this no more. You really don't. And this box here contains the screw, the stern post for the rudder, and also the uh, The stern tube uh, for the propeller shaft, the stuffing box, pipe preservers, portholes, brass, funnels, boats. You name it, it's in there. See, building boats at that time. You can buy the kit. These don't come with it. These got to be purchased separately. The reason why they do that for two reasons is in case you bend the building, it's too difficult for you to build. You say, screw it, I ain't going to build no more of this thing until I get some more skills going on. Or I'll get rid of the darn thing. The only thing you're out of is $20, $15 for the boat. Well, these things are expensive. So if you're going to buy something like this for that, your intentions are to, to build this thing from kill up until it's completed. Then you can have your fittings. So this is the right way to go. So the uh, another option, too, is to keep the price of the model down. If they concluded this with the kit, you'd be paying 100 At that time, you'd be paying probably about almost $100 for this model. 
And a hundred dollars back in nineteen sixty was a hell of a lot of money. It was a lot of money. A hundred bucks you could buy a lot of stuff back in those days. A lot of stuff. Hundred dollars nowadays has a value of a do- of, a, of, t- of ten dollars, maybe nine. This is one of the things that nowadays building models uh, with the new laser system they got going on, they include the fittings with the kits now. So that's why you pay three, four hundred dollars for this and that. And one of those fittings, that model will go down real quick in, in price. And it's got an introductory thing here. It's, it's bilingual. So most of most of it's probably in Danish or German, and also a little bit of English. It tells you, dear model builder, you're about to begin the exciting task of building a, a building boost model, and I hope you will have many pleasant hours doing so. The most important point is that this kit is intended to be built, not assembled. See, you got to do a lot of scratch work on this thing. So you got to know what you're doing. Don't just run a model. Comes with about two or three sets of plans. The instructions, again, the Danish and a little bit of English. I was very surprised. I bought some belly bolt kits or didn't have English on there. For example, like that uh, Isabella, one I built about uh, three years ago, three or four years ago by Billings. Here is the complete model when it's done. So you need to follow this from regular the detail. There's a bow of it. And there is the stern. Let me tell you a story about this lighthouse right here. <coughs> we'll go for the kids' contents. Either that. Now there's a plan up here that I'm working on here. This is the, the assembly plan, which has exploded views and it has parts numbers and everything like that, so you get a good idea how they look like everything when you build them. This plan here is uh, plan number two. This is no review. Oh, the deck has to look at aft. This is aft here. That's where your your, your rudder tube, your rudder rudder post goes through. And so you you tell her to work to your servo back here. And of course, you got your propeller shaft you got to run her too. That's got to be cut out and everything else. A lot of work involved. These things ain't simple. But there's a bow right there. That's painted gray. It's aged pretty well for fit of parts and fittings. I made a complete inventory of this thing. They got a parts list of this thing in the back of the, of the box. That tells you uh, what parts are what and everything. So if it's all there, I was very amazed. As, well, as long as I had this thing, guys, I was really surprised I had this. Man. Okay, right here is, is general assembly of parts. Locations, how they look. Views. When you're building your things, always look at the plans. You gotta consult with the plans constantly. Look at them because they're tricky. They'll play tricks on you. You see a part and now where the hell does this go at? And as you look over here, I'll be god darn how did I miss that? See what I'm saying? You really got to study these these drawings. Now. Here's the fun part. Is the lighthouse itself. Now, Billings also makes a lighthouse finished out of brass. It even has wires coming out when it has a bulb. We can go via inside your hull, out to your power, power source. That's if it's a solid model. So this plan here shows the construction of the foghorn, and all the, and also the uh, the lighthouse, the mass arrangements, everything. A lot of good stuff there. Okay, back to the kit. 
I went down to Home Depot. I think I paid about six dollars. No, I paid fifteen dollars. Man, with e everything is going up. Ever since we got this chucklehead in office, whew, everything's sky high. I paid almost fifteen dollars for a hunk of this wood. It's four foot by eight. Like this eight inches. It's four foot by eight inches. Like, yeah, I was right. Four by eight. And I bought me some half inch by quarter inch timber right here. This one was the keel way. That way I can lay my model so it's jigged on the keel here and I can work on the keel. Last night I spent about two hours cutting out the deck. Another thing about building models that wood is very, very hard. So we use a number 11 blade when you're cutting out because the wood they use is called rayon. It's kind of, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a brittle wood. It'll splinter on you. That's one thing I hate about building models is the wood they use splinters. So they keep them splintering on you. You always cover the bottom of it with tape. That one splinters, it's stuck with a tape set. It's all glued there. All you can do is one of one's an ACC across it and it's done. This didn't splinter. So you gotta make sure keep well, keep these things splintery is you gotta use a file board and a file all your tools and make sure your notches on the deck are completely square. So they interlock inside these frames right here. And sometimes you push them, they split. So they should just pop like in there. That's why you take a bit of sandpaper or a file. So that way it pops in like this did. I glued this whole thing on here. I clamped it on overnight last night. So it dried for about a good 16 hours, I'm thinking. Perhaps even more. So this thing's 100 percent dried now. I just removed the clamps up here and the folks will up here. There's a bevel goes right across here. It's one thing I like about this here. I can slide this bill like this. My ways, you can see I've been like a track right here. I built there's a bevel right here. You gotta take a strip of wood across here, you gotta plank it on both sides at the same time. So, the wood's really fresh. I'm not gonna take a ruler and a scratch owl and start carving out deck lines on there, even with a pencil. Set for you ready. I don't need to. Plus, this is going to be a working model. It's going to have lights in it. It's going to have a motor in it. I'll, have, I'll put a circuit board inside there and hook up my lighthouse. That circuit board has its own separate power source to power that LED. And the other circuit board will, 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 will I've got two strips of, that, of the LED lights that I can put inside here. <clears throat> they can operate that too. Plus, that, that radio that I got from Amazon has eight channels. What else could it be? Even better. On the deck right here, before I do anything more on this thing, I've already made an inspection on this thing. See, your things fit. I took this Listel. These are Listels they gave me. This, this is probably about like five inch, a half inch almost. And it's, it's very soft. So I was checking to see how it planks goes very well. Now, the frames 10, up 8.5, up to zero, up to zero, zero to 8, I can have a bevel those a little bit. That way, when it's beveled, the planking can fit flush across there. You don't want to fit on the corner right there with a sharp edge of it, where it has a bevel. It's not, you know, It'll throw it out. So it's got to be uniform. It's got to be beveled out so they accept the, the flushes of the Lestel. I just took us out of the box, checked things out. Okay, we'll make this thing over here. I'm going to take a look at this contents of this box. In these baggies, there's, there's a stand right there for it. 
I'm gonna build a special stand for this thing. You need that too. It's not any work put on things. Things be heavy to get done. I got more plywood parts to put on here. They gave you two hard balsa. Turn blocks. I feel about like that. They got to be carved out to the chamfer of the hole, and plus, they got to be carved out too to accept the the control horn of the of the stern of the rudder post. In other words, it's not going to work. It's almost like that in the Sterling American Scout. They could have designed that better, but 1960. Well, the technology went too much up, went too much up the stuff back then. You got what you got back then, they. And I was happy. This little baggie here consists of the lighthouse that you gotta make. There's a plastic piece there. What you got to do is I got my vise over here. Make sure it's flush. And I'm gonna I got a small drill press I'm gonna bring in here. I'm going to take a drill press. I'm going to drill a hole all the way through this dowel to cut out the other end. And the same thing right here. And the same thing right same thing right here. So I fit my, my lighthouse on there. I can have my LED bulb going through there and uh, get it all assembled. If you don't want to go that route, I had no idea that Billings made a, a complete finished kit of this already done, built for you out of brass with a light bulb in it with wires. Boy, I missed that one. And you got all this wood here, it's got to be cut out with scroll saws. All these pieces. With careful attention to everything, you can be able to cut that out pretty well with another 11 blade in some areas. But cut out those X marks right there, you got to drill holes through there and cut them out to bottom the shape. A lot of, a lot of work. Now the top deck goes here. The boat deck. So this thing actually fits almost up top like that. As per picture. Man. You still smell that Billings wood. Oh, I think I smell this kit, so I got to have a good smell to them. So this kit's pretty pristine as old as it is. I must have good care of it. I'm in the box all the time. Okay, this little bag here contains a, a parts like skylights, stacks, miscellaneous parts. Parts to go with that diagram up there. All deck furniture parts, mostly. Exactly what it is. With all, every one of them got numbers on them for easy identification. I like that. As you can see, they got identification numbers on them in that baggie. Alrighty. Next thing to do now. I want to get the can of polyurethane. I got a big wide brush. This deck needs to be traded before I proceed any further because I'm going to be putting planks on that thing. And it's got to have something protected because by the time I get the filler, all that filler dust will, it will pregnate itself in that deck and you can't get that stuff out. So you got to go ahead and put polyurethane on it. 
They put moisture back in wood to get strength. It's going to be a few coats that's nice and shiny. It was nice and shiny. They had a beautiful, a luscious coat on there. I can go ahead and uh, cover it with, uh, with wax paper to prevent it from getting harmed when I do sanding and, and, and nailing. But now we get this deck all, all polyurethane first before I go any further. And hopefully by tomorrow I can start the planking. That's going to be fun. Along, I forgot to show you. Yeah. Right here. My tree nails. They're about three sixteenths long. You got to take a pair of tweezers and hold them. These are now your planks together. This is the glue I've been using. I always use this glue. This type of good stuff. And I pour it in a bowl. Use the brush. Brush on where the paint Use liberal coats of glue. Spot your first strength of, of Listel as you're planking. Needle nose pliers or these. You grab these here. Hold nail like that against the hole and give it a good love tap. You get that nail punch in there and it's in. Take another one. There's a couple times with the tweezers. Bang, bang, bang. Because you use your hand, you're going to put holes in your fingers. Believe you me. When I was building an Isabella, I should have known better. I sure should. I paid penalty for that. I had little small holes in my fingers. Man, where did all these little holes come from? Holding little small nails with my fingers going like that. But right here is it. Or use small needle nose pliers, which is the best yet. I got needle nose pliers over here. I ain't going to be using these. I'll be using those. Right tool for everything. When you're done using your glue brush, you have yourself a little water here. That soak in there. You don't want to get it, it'll get hard, hard as nails, you know. So I got a lot of food for food on the table for me to chow down on. So right now thing to do is probably go to pay the stack. And uh when it dries a couple hours, give it a couple more coats so it's nice to get a good a good gloss on it. Let it dry. Then you can cover it with some wax paper. And that way the deck's protected. You sanding, if any of that dust gets on the deck, it'll blow off because it's all protected with polyurethane. That's good stuff. Then after it dries, when the model's almost finished, I'm going to take a little small Brillo pad with a dowel. And I'm going to dull out all that darn polyurethane with a Brillo pad so it's nice and smooth. Then I'll clean it off and I'll spray Put the spray back on there. It's wide enough to put a six volt motor in this thing. Okay, guys, that's what I got going on now. So it's, it's something new and uh, something quite different, as you can see. So stick with Frankie Day, and uh, for the next 20 videos, we'll get this thing start from kill to finish. And uh, right now, it's, it's coming on quite nicely and let it dry. And uh, you just got the another thing about building these things is you got to plan, you got to make plans. You just can't jump in and do this. You get to make a plan. So by planning ahead will save you a lot of problems. That's why I, want, I need to get this deck polyurethane. Save me some headaches. But like I say, I want to wipe this out. This is a one-shot Jody. This kid here is a one-shot Jody. It's all it is. You make one mistake in this thing, it's, it's done. So take your time, you build these building boats. All model boats. Take your time. 
because if you take your time to do a good job, it's, it's rewarding to yourself. First, once yourself is pleased, man, everybody else is going to go nuts over it. Okay, I'm out of here right now, guys. You make mama happy. Take care of the little ones. Spend wisely. It's summertime. I like to uh, wish everybody a belated, a happy belated uh, Memorial Day. I had to work yesterday, and uh, that's why I couldn't wish a happy Memorial Day to all you people. I hope all you guys had a wonderful Memorial Day with family, and reminisce for the loved ones. And don't forget the vets who made this country free that slowly be taken away by my knuckleheads in the White House. So, prayer and God will be ship shape in no time, guys. Our next video will be uh, video number two. It will probably be about a day or two from now. And in between videos of drying times, like right now, when this thing is drying, I'm going to bring out my cargo master. And I'll probably make a video of that when this thing is drying. So I may have that one for you tonight. So that's been calling on me too. Okay, this is Frankie Day from Frankie Day Models signing off. You guys take care of you guys. We'll see you in the next video. And God bless you all. And I love you guys very much. Thank you very much to my new subscribers. And uh, thank you very much. And God love everybody. And have a very, very wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. Because right now it's beautiful outside. A lot of people, they go outside and do things like fish. And uh, I'm going to the pond. So you guys take care. And God bless you all. I love you fellas. Frankie Day out of here. Catch you next video. Bye, boys.